Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today we are highlighting an exciting collaboration between the City of Grand Prairie, the County of Grand Prairie, and the Municipal District of Greenview, a united initiative aimed at showcasing the exceptional investment opportunities in Northwest Alberta. With its abundant natural resources and thriving communities, this region offers tremendous potential for businesses and investors. The three municipalities have joined forces under the banner of Invest NW Alberta, a collaborative marketing and promotional effort designed to pool resources and share the cost of advertising, trade shows, and events. By working together, they aim to maximize the impact of their efforts and attract significant investment to the area. Invest NW Alberta will provide targeted support to investors, ensuring that they have the information and resources needed to make informed decisions. With a single point of contact, consistent messaging, and a coordinated strategy for planning and development, the initiative makes Northwest Alberta an attractive destination for businesses and residents alike. Joining us to discuss the impact of Invest NW Alberta is Grand Prairie Mayor Jackie Clayton. Uh, Mayor Clayton, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, the city of uh, Grand Prairie, the county of Grand Prairie, and the MD of Greenview have all come together on a new initiative that was launched back in September. Well, it was officially launched back in sept uh, September called Invest NW Alberta. Where did this uh, initiative come from? Well, for many years, uh, the municipalities of the city, the county and the MD have been working together on collaborative approaches in regards to investment and economic development. For a long time, I've said what's good for the region is good for the city. And, and it's probably in the last few years really more come to fruition and, and people are understanding what that means. And I think that it's important for us to recognize that each of the municipalities in our region have a role in growth and opportunity. We're very fortunate to live where we live. Northwestern Alberta is often considered the economic engine of the province. And with that, Alberta being, you know, the economic engine of the country, I think it's important to recognize our role. And so we want to be strategic in our growth. We want to be collaborative in our approach. And, and for um, in it, in the infancy, it's meant going to trade shows together, doing, uh, you know, joint um, events together where we invite industry and update them on our priorities. We update them individually, but then we show how we are working together and how we believe that whether it lands in the MD or whether it lands in the county or the city, that it impacts and benefits everybody. And so having that collaborative approach, we believe um, really will set us apart because we often hear from industry that they don't understand where the boundaries are and the borders are, but they still want to support or invest into a region. This way, you we are really putting it um, in front of you and saying, you know, Invest Northwest is something that can support you in that conversation of bigger picture thinking and what's possible. Why was it important for the municipalities to take the lead on this initiative? Because with an economic uh, sort of... Uh, focus, you would assume that businesses would be the key priority to take this initiative and run with it to attract other businesses. Why was it important for the municipality to do it? Well, each of our municipalities have an economic development team and a department. And I think that those are incredible tools as part of the whole toolkit when it comes to expanding a business or uh, really um, retaining a business as a business looks to grow that's already exists in our region, the economic development teams of each respective municipality have all those tools. This is really bigger picture thinking of what's possible, what could be on the horizon, what is on people's radar and really bringing that attention and focus to Northwestern Alberta. When you hear of people who are exploring opportunities for growth and that, you know, they're looking for inexpensive land, they're looking for access to power, they're looking for access to um, market. Uh, we really are strategically located and have that opportunity. Bringing it all together is an opportunity for conversation to really strike those conversations and put this region in the forefront of people's mind that may not normally be aware of it. When the MD or the city or the county and and go out and promote their economic development teams, it's really within our boundaries. And although everybody works collaboratively, this is a bigger picture pitch and a bigger picture thinking of 
a significant investment in the region. Everybody has the role, whether it's land, whether it's housing, whether it's access to labor, whatever that is. Us doing um, things together and collaboratively, we see as a significant win. Over the past few years, we've done labor market studies, we've done investment attraction pieces, and now really it's that next step of saying, if you're looking for something significant and really want um, an opportunity, Northwestern Alberta is a great place to consider. Is this a doors open approach or is there a specific industry or sector that the three municipalities are particularly looking for? You talk about housing, you talk about the energy sector, but is there a specific area that the three municipalities are hoping to attract over some others or is it doors open, everyone's welcome to the Northwest? I think it would be fair to say that we're very fortunate in this region having, you know, initially um, been strong in agriculture and getting on the map per se through agricultural growth and, and, and output. Then came along forestry where they, you know, in this region, we are recognized as the forest capital of Canada and 51% of all forestry activity happens in this region. And so then with a boom of, of energy and oil and gas, and now in the growth in that us being that central hub in the city alone, services such as healthcare and the spin-offs of healthcare, having that regional hospital really are coming to light and fruition. We not only have healthcare services and professional services, we're really in the city boundaries, those retail hubs. And so when you add forestry, agriculture, uh, oil and gas onto that, and then that being that service center hub, whether it's retail um, professional services or healthcare, everything is really here. Access to rail is here. Access to labor is here. Um, the average housing price is below the provincial average, and it's really it's it's a really a great win and opportunity. When people talk about expansion in Alberta, there's some key areas such as Alberta's industrial heartland where they primarily look, and we know realistically that took about 25 years to come to the point of where it is today. This is the next place for that. And within the MDA Greenview, they have Greenview Industrial Gateway. The gig is something that could be Alberta's industrial heartland. But with Northwest Invest Northwest, we know that there's parts of it that the county and the city can play in that role or in that relationship as well. Investment comes with growth. And growth is uh, a topic that a lot of municipalities, like the city of Grand Prairie, in our previous conversation, we've talked about extensively. And one of the big key factors about growth is come comes with sustainable sustainable growth. Do you see investment being needed at this time when municipalities are struggling with infrastructure upgrades, with challenges to their water supplies? Are you able to balance the growth and investment that you're looking for with this initiative with the realities that the municipalities are facing today? I think that it's realistic to say that we've already been through that first boom that many municipalities in Alberta are facing in, you know, in the early 2012 to 2014, this region went through significant growth. They put investment uh, into infrastructure and, and we've also in the past 10 years seen school booms. We went through a period of time where it was significant investment in education facilities. And so we've been through the growth that many of the regions of the province are facing. We're ready for the next iteration of that and the next big boom. And our infrastructure, our investment, our strategic approach is really being facilitated by the work that's been done in the last 10 years. And so it's a little bit different than some of the areas of the province that you're seeing growth in right now, because we have already been through that and we are strategically situated to be able to take the next significant amount of growth. While it seems like the three municipalities are on board with this initiative, are the residents. So this has been a two, this has been uh, announced two months ago and we're now or well, a month ago, we're in the middle of October when we're recording this. Are you hearing from residents that they want to see more investments, whether it be in the city of Grand Prairie or in the county or in the MD? And I'm going to ask that to the, your fellow colleagues, but for the city perspective, do residents want more investment? Yeah, so when we did the official, so the soft launch in September, it's, it created a lot of conversation and interest. Next week, we're doing a more formal launch in Calgary with, uh, you know, with C-suite executives and to talk about what the opportunity is. I know that we're hearing on a regular basis, businesses are excited and ready for the next boom. We are seeing a fairly natural growth rate in all industries. You'll hear um, from industries that'll say, 10 years ago when we were growing, it was really that 
go, go, go mentality. And, and businesses will tell you they weren't necessarily making any more money than they are now because they were just responding. Now they're being strategic and they're ready for growth. And I think that if we were, now that we're working collaboratively, we're not competing against each other. We're not um, being contradictory to each other. Um, we also understand that each of us primarily have a revenue of a tax base. And so in the urban center specifically, my biggest tax form of revenue comes from taxation. So do I want to see things specifically land in Grand Prairie in the city proper? Absolutely. But I do believe that if the next big thing lands in the MD or the county, that there is huge spinoff. And we've seen it in small industrial parks and commercial park. And, um, we've also seen it through residential growth. Um, you know, you see commercial growth as with industrial growth and so that regional sort of spin off of each other we're in a great place for growing together and I think that's a little bit unique you see um, other areas of the country um, that aren't collaborative and I think that's something that our respective councils should be proud to be open to those conversations and having the foresight to see what it looks like to work together it's recognizing that you may not always get the win yourself but if the region gets a win that is a win and so that's not always how it's been. And I think that's something that we remind ourselves on a regular basis. And, and I say it often, what's good for the sit region is good for the city. And I'm really optimistic about what these conversations when we are on the same page look like, because I could tell you small things that are happening in the MD and small things that are happening in the county. And I can talk to you all day about the city. But when we have the same key messages that we're supporting each other because we can't all be everywhere. I think that just tells a better story for the region and, and, and that will have payoff and benefits. What's the metrics that have been put into place to ensure the success of this program? Because uh, I'm assuming there's dollars that are being put behind this initiative and uh, any taxpayer will ask, what are the metrics that are going to be uh, to make this initiative successful? So for you as the city's mayor, what metrics do you want to see in place? Or are you looking at in a year's time to, when you come back to, to say, okay, did it accomplish what we want it to accomplish? Well, to date, I would say it's more of a, a shell of an organization in the sense that um, we're doing collaborative marketing. We make sure that when we go, um, say, to a trade show, whether it's in Texas or whether it's in Edmonton, that our economic development teams are working together and so that we have a co-branded sort of appearance. But we are in the process of finalizing the terms of reference. And to date, there actually isn't money behind this. And so this may just be always an initiative where we go together collaboratively and pay, pay each other's, pay for your own respective contribution and initiatives. But I see personally, see it as a bigger picture. I think there is sort of a entity that, let's say, prepares to grow with time. If you look at, say, an Edmonton Global type initiative where there's municipalities that are members, there's an independent board, and, and there's an organization that's out there with subject matter experts talking about opportunity. Um, this is in its infancy, but I think that there's an opportunity to see um, across the world what's possible and what fits in northwestern Alberta. I do think uh, what a win and, and a metric that's important is that every single time you hear about industry expansion that this region was one of the factors or was at the table for consideration. If you have a large significant company that's looking to invest that they don't automatically go to the same places that we were always considered and part of the um, you know, narrow down to the top three, this region has no reason that it shouldn't be in every factor of its expansion consideration for any organization. So you mentioned Global Edmonton and I want to play in that sandbox for a brief second, if you don't mind. Yeah. How is this in, uh, initiative different than a RETA? Because the regional economic development authorities that are across Alberta right now are at the end of their life. The province has announced that they're stepping back. Is this in replace of the RETAs that are currently in place up in the Northwest? Or is this a completely different uh, venue that you're looking to just attract for your three areas? So my colleagues, the county and the MD are part of PRITA. We're not part of PRITA. Um, PRITA plays a great role for um, smaller rural municipalities and being you know, the municipality that's 70,000 people and really can stand on its own, we support 300,000 people. We serve 300,000 people on a regular basis. And with that, our, our needs are a little bit unique from what a PRITA offers. And so I think that um, right now, 
in its infancy, these three municipalities are so intertwined and work together so well that we're just exploring what's valuable for the three of us. Does that say that in time it may include a Prida or it may become a different entity um, in, you know, in support of a Prida? That's possible. But really we're focused on the three of us right now. And our needs in the city are quite unique. And so sometimes we're that little, we're that island that's serving everybody. And uh, it's really a unique role because if you were to, we for a long time talked about regional hubs. And if you were to look, in my opinion, there's probably only about five regional hubs in the entire province. And, and if there's an opportunity for a different funding model, it would make sense because there's significant pieces that we as a urban center provide that are valuable to the entire region and even uh, northeastern BC that there's no revenue stream from. So if we service that hub, um, you know, it, I think it's important to recognize that regional funding um, needs to be considered. And we've talked about that for a long time. So if the province isn't looking at regional funding, how we can see potential growth in our municipality uh, is through partnerships. And so our partnerships are primarily focused with the city and the MD right now. And, and the three of us work really well together. We, although we are very unique and we each bring a different perspective and a different um, skill set and a different, um, a different toolbox to the table, when we really simple it down, people that are in the MD and people that are in the county, people that are in city, we intertwine in recreation and culture and business every single day. And recreation and culture and business don't see those boundaries. So when you cross the boundary to go play hockey with your kid, or if you go to a cultural event in another municipality, you don't think, oh, I'm traveling to a different municipality. You just think of it as a region. And so when we look at growth in that perspective, uh, I think that it's really important. Uh, it's, it's strategic in the sense that there is a, a huge win um, when we get along, play well together, we are strategic together. And right now, I think we're in that kind of sweet spot where we took many years to get to know each other. And now we're in that piece where we can be on the same team and recognize that together we will win together. We will grow. And so I think it's really a huge opportunity. You, the, the common theme throughout this interview so far is about collaboration. Um, I, I think last year when we were talking, you took you talked about uh, the collaborative work that you and the county are working on, and now you've introduced a, another entity, which is the MD of Greenview. You, you talk about those smaller communities as well. Looking ahead, do you see a role for these smaller communities like a Wembley, like a Sexsmith, or are you just in? I know you're an infant, you're at the infancy stage of this initiative right now, but do you see in the next ten years a role that you're being more collaborative with those smaller communities as well? Absolutely. I think that uh, Northwest Alberta supports and, and on a map is a large area. Um, and, and each, you know, I, I speak with Reeve Ungarian on a regular basis and Mayor McAteer and, and Northern uh, chief elected members. And I think that it, um, it as Northwest Alberta grows, it uh, becomes even more relevant to that strategic piece. But for now, it makes sense for the MD and the county and the city to really work together. At the beginning of this term, I was really clear. I wanted to make sure that we brought the city of Grand Prairie's name to every conversation and that whether that be provincially or across the country, um, this is the hardest working council I've had the privilege to work with. And they've given me sort of the opportunity to go and, and be part of those conversations. Um, sometimes those conversations and turning over those rocks lead nowhere, but if you're willing to put in the time, you will find some special things. And I think that that's sort of where we're at. I think um, Alberta's industrial heartland is a great asset of Alberta. Uh, we also know that with growth, sometimes comes capacity. And so I think the next iteration of that is really in Northwestern Alberta. And so we're in front of those question, conversations now and laying the groundwork for that next piece. All the natural resources are here. The raw natural resource that really supports the entire rest, rest of the province, whether it's power generation, whether it's agriculture, forestry is situated in this region. And so having the foresight to be in front of that so that Alberta continues to be successful is extremely important. And I'm really proud of the work that we're doing as three of us. Is there an opportunity for that to grow in the future? Possibly. I hope so. I'm always an optimist, but I think that it's uh, really some, a special place we are currently. 
how can people learn more about this initiative? Because I feel like we've just scratched the surface and there are still going to be things coming out. Because you said you had your soft launch in September. You're going to be down here in Calgary for investment meetings. How can people learn more? I think that as we get uh, rolling, you'll, you will see regular updates from the organization. And sometimes it may just be as simple as you may see us collectively at a trade show, or you may see us collectively doing a media release and, and, some of the work that Invest Northwest will do is probably behind the scenes because it's really those conversations um, that uh, happen in advance of any announcements and that sort of forecasting and that sort of what's possible and, and what if we consider this. And so you may not hear from Invest Northwest as, as often as you would say from an Invest Grand Prairie or an economic development team from the county because they are doing that work day to day. And this is bigger picture. And so uh, there's conversations that you may not hear about for on a regular basis, but then you may hear an announcement that we collectively did. And so it won't be um, as forward facing as a department of either of our municipalities, but it will be something that is having the foresight and, and, and really getting out there and talking about what's possible. What if we considered this? We also got up with County of Grand Prairie Reeve, Bob Marshall, about this initiative and how he sees the benefits of this partnership and collaborative approach working in favor of the County of Grand Prairie. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about this new collaborative uh, effort that yourself, the City of Grand Prairie and the MD of Greenview have undertaken in September can you talk to me and explain me, yeah. why it was important for the County of Grand Prairie to be part of this par Invest NW Alberta uh, initiative? Uh, a number of reasons. Uh, I get one of the primary reasons is it's collaboration between, so that it shows uh, large entities that as a region we're working together. When the mayor and I were down in Sierra Week in Houston last year, most of the big corporation companies and stuff that were looking at potential investment sites, they want to know that the municipalities are working together and not fighting amongst each other. So this is one of the benefits. Plus it's also, it works where we can tie in with the provincial side as well, because their program is Invest Alberta. So this kind of ties in with that. So it's, I think, putting all our resources in and working together because we all have limited resources so if we can work together we're going to get a lot further ahead so yeah is there is there any specific industries or sectors that uh you believe will benefit most in this a new initiative or is it a hopeful that all sectors all industries will be uh wanting to come invest in the northwest part of alberta well, I think we have a huge opportunity and in, in across a number of sectors. I mean, oil and gas, we have one of the largest um, with the Montney Duvenay area here. We've got one of the largest deposits for natural gas and liquids and stuff in the in the North America, basically. And I think we're the fifth one of the fifth largest plays in North America. Um, so that from that aspect, I mean, we've got the raw material. So is there a value added that can be brought up here? So marketing that. Uh, the other one is forestry. Um, we've got two sawmills, one within the city, one just outside in the pulp mill within the county. Then Greenview has one down south. And we did a, between the Greenview and us, we did a, a study a while ago and we got a BDO rating, A rating, which basically gives us it says outside of what's already being used from the wood aspect, there's still about 300,000 bone dry metric tons of woody biomass can easily be accessed to for some other, whether it's pellets, biofuel, some, some other value added. So we, we're the only ones in Alberta that have that rating. So that's another aspect that we're marketing. And from an agricultural standpoint, I don't, most people don't realize, but in Northwestern Alberta, that that's all the Northwestern Alberta up to high level. There's more agricultural land in the northwest part of Alberta than there is in Manitoba. And Manitoba is one of the prairie provinces. So from an agricultural, again, raw, raw material, canola crushing, biofuel, again, we have a huge, we've got all kinds of raw material, natural resources here to 
that could be manufactured into an uh, upscaled and, and sent out somewhere else into the world, as well as even tourism. If you look at the province, the provincial map, <clears throat> excuse me, they're looking to grow tourism by $20 billion, up to $20 billion, we're sitting about $12 billion. And by 2030, and we are one of the regions they're focusing on. I mean, we have Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum. We just excavated Big Sam. I'm not sure if you heard about that, the skull. So, I mean, we've been getting massive hits on that all across North America and even into Europe and even into Korea and stuff. So we're, it's an opportunity to utilize the museum up here as kind of the linchpin, the, the anchor tenant. We have lots of other activities that could uh, accentuate and and also prop up that aspect as well so really we have all kinds of opportunity up here so it's working together to market that and not fighting amongst ourselves and getting that message out out to the world that you know we're here for business we're here to to move things ahead and we want to develop and be sustainable within our region and we have everything here that's required to do that Investment comes with growth, though, and I think you'd be honest with that. Do you see the county of Grand Prairie, and let's just talk about the county of Grand Prairie for a second on this question. Do you mm -hmm. see yourself set up for potential growth or potential investment so you're not turning people away because you can't ask people to come if you do not have the infrastructure in place or the resources in place to ensure that this investment that you're trying to attract is going to benefit and not hinder the already existing infrastructure in place. Oh, definitely. I, and our economic development team has uh, worked hard to site selection. Uh, so we've got tools within our economic development uh, web map to help people see where uh, potential sites are. We've got a number of industrial parks that are ready to go at certain at different levels depending what wants to come in different size lots for a different scale of operations and stuff we have a massive uh industrial site down by the pulp mill and the sawmill on the south side of the city that could be on a larger scale petrochemical or or something else uh so we have a lot of that within the county and even the infrastructure uh the road networks and stuff we're always upgrading those and we're working with the province to to help with that because a lot of it is provincial highways and stuff so it's making sure when we know we have those investments coming in the province needs to invest because this is huge tax dollars not just for us it's also for the province and they need to be investing back in here so that the whole province can realize that growth have you spoken to anyone in the business community within the county of Grand Prairie and asked them their thoughts on this investment? Because investment means that there's going to be potential competition for these businesses that are already in place. Or do they see a, uh, an economic down, a windfall of being able to invest in the county along with helping their own businesses as well? Well, I'm looking at most of the businesses that are set up within, say, around the Claremont area there's a lot of the service industry. So they're all going to be beneficial right now. They're all scrambling They're They don't have enough people to do all the work that's out there. So we're working with the Polytechnic as well to, to tailor the business needs and the educational needs so that we can meet what the business requires for the region as well. So it's a made in Grand Prairie in our region solution. And yeah, if we're bringing in a large scale operation, it's going to benefit everybody. There's spinoff for for all the businesses to some extent. Everybody's going to, and we need to go in with that mindset. And anybody that doesn't have that mindset, we need to have a, a frank conversation. I mean, if you're going to be isolationist, you're not going to be as successful as if we work together. And really with the challenges that we're facing potentially, and if any of these big ones come across the line, we need to be working together and helping everybody else so that then we all succeed. We're, we all have a bigger piece of the pie and we'll all be better off in the end. Why was it important for the county to take part in this initiative? I know you I asked that question at the beginning, but I'm going to phrase it a little bit differently in this one. 
should shouldn't we just leave uh this in type of investment up to the free market and allow new businesses new investments to happen naturally or are you trying to take a more proactive approach to sort of market your part of the province in a more positive light well to your last point yes uh again when the mayor and i were down in in uh houston at sierra week you have all kinds of municipal everybody's selling if you want to sit on your duff and hopefully they'll come to you good luck i i think that's one in a million shot that's like winning the lottery and i haven't won the lottery yet so i think you need to you really need to get out and market you, you can't over overspend with that but you need to be realistic and target where your strengths are and then go after those and really know who you are trying to bring into the region and what you have to offer them and then be very focused because as i said there's only so many resources you can't use a sh shotgun approach you may be at the beginning just to see kind of what's out there but then you need to get really focused and and go after what okay this is where we know we we can be successful let's make the most of it and really target those industries in the municipal world, there's often metrics put into place to ensure a project viability or a project's longevity. Is there any metrics that you're putting in place as the reeve of the county to ensure that in a year's time, you can look back and say, okay, we accomplished this, so therefore it is has been a success? Or are we still in early days that you still haven't put those metrics into place? I think our economic development team has some of those metrics in place as to what we're trying to achieve. Uh, so far, we we got a lot of people circling, kind of checking the area region out. We just need to actually grab one and pull them in and make them land and stuff. So there's a couple that are very close. And if we, I think perception is if we can get one or two to land, the other ones will see okay this is definitely where we a good place to be and it'll pull even 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 more it's kind of the chicken or the egg who gets there first and then yeah so right now we're we're really focusing on getting that one to land and and come in so we do have some of those metrics in place i know our economic development team does have some of that so we're always measuring against and, and you know what this is an ever-changing it's always fluid you're going to have to adjust sometimes. Okay. That didn't work. Let's re refocus or re re-energize or, you know, go down this road instead. This one looks more promising because you never know future. If I knew what was coming in the future, I, I would have won the lottery and I'd be retired by now. Um, me as well. Uh, I just want to ask about the future as well, keeping on this line of question before I let you go. And this is a, a partnership and a collaborative approach initiative that is sparred by Greenview, the county, and the city. Now, in the county itself, you have many smaller urban communities, Sexsmith, you have Wembley, you have Beaver Lodge. Do you see a future where they would be playing a role in this uh, adventure as well? Or are you just trying to keep the, the three main entities right now and then in five years who might be able to bring on those smaller communities i think just on the reality is greenview us and the city are the three largest and municipalities and resource wise in the region the other ones will be brought into the loop kind of because they don't have the same resources from an economic development standpoint as we do so we will work with them and there, there's going to be spinoff for those communities as we bring in more people not everybody's going to want to live in the city some people are going to want the smaller town aspect some are going to want the rural out in the county and stuff so each one of those communities i believe will benefit uh whether it's even the service industry whether people want to set up out there more, cheaper Typically, the further out you get from the city, I mean, that's just reality. It's no different than Edmonton or Calgary. The same things happen. The further away you get, a little less expensive it is, whether you're buying land personally or even in setting up in, on, in an industrial standpoint.
And before I let you go, my final question is, what role does the province have to play in helping this initiative get off the ground? Or do you see a role that the province plays in getting this initiative going as well? Because I know it's still early days. We're about a month from when it officially launched it was as of recording this. Do you, do you see the province playing a role in helping promote this this area of Alberta? Or are you hoping that the municipalities just take it and run with it themselves and keep the province out of it? No, it's it's a partnership. We need to be working together at the provincial level. They have connections we don't. Uh, again, they their program is Invest Alberta. We're Invest Northwest. So we're more targeted for our area, but with that, we now have a program that we can go with their economic development teams, and we're working together uh, to promote the region. I mean, Edmonton has theirs, Calgary has theirs, different regions have theirs, but really it's finding the best solution. Their their role is to find the best solution for Alberta. Our role is to promote our area so that we they know what they can promote for us. Again, it's working together. We need to be utilizing all our resources for the benefit of everybody in the province. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me. Uh, before I let you go, I know I keep on saying this is the last question, but there's always one that comes up at the very last minute. What's your message to the people of the County of Grand Prairie about how this will benefit them? How it will benefit them? As we bring in more industrial, commercial, it will make us more sustainable. It allows us, from a tax base, it allows us to invest in more services, higher standard of living. Uh, it, hopefully, I mean, it, and it keeps our kids the majority of them at home because we have all kinds of opportunity here instead of our kids going off somewhere else. Some will, some will go anyways. That That's just unfortunately the way it goes. My son left, but my daughter's still here. So, but it's, it's really for the benefit of the region and the growth, the sustainability. We won't become a ghost pro a municipality. We have all kinds of potential here and it, growth has its challenges. Not going to deny that. I mean, there's always a yin and a yang, but overall, the the benefit is going to be positive, and we need to focus on that and make sure we do it right so that we minimize the negative impacts to our residents and our way of life up here. But really, it it will be beneficial to our region for the long term. Also joining us for today's episode is from the MD of Greenview, Reeve Tyler Olson, who talks about the benefits this initiative will have for his community. Reeve Olson, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, earlier this year in September, the MD of Greenview, the City of Grand Prairie, and the County of Grand Prairie have all come together for a new initiative called Invest NW Alberta. Why is this initiative so important for the MD of Greenview? It's doing what we've been doing in the background, but taking it to the next level. We've been pushing our regional relationships the last three years. And being able to take this to a formal, this is how we're going to market formally. We've been able to bring these partnerships and it just shows how this region is working together. When you think on a big scale, you can't think your own municipality. You can't do that. If we're the things we want to bring to this area, it's regional and it's going to affect everybody. And we understand that if we go alone, it's not going to work. Everyone has tried that, but you got to bring it together. And what benefits one of our municipalities is a huge benefit for the others. So we got to bring it together. And this is our first step to make sure everyone knows we're working together and bring in the big fish for the area. Is there specific industries or sectors that you're hoping to attract over others? Or are you sort of looking at a doors open approach? And if anyone wants to invest in the area, they're willing to have that conversation with this new initiative. Absolutely. Our doors are wide open for everybody. We don't, we're not in the business of saying no, we're more in the business saying, how can we make this happen? What's your idea? What can we do? Obviously with our Greenview industrial gateway, we're looking into the petrochemical area, Lumber is always huge in our area, so any of the forestry stuff, but even the ag processing. We've got some of the best ag land in the area. Our producers are phenomenal. So those are the big three, but we're open to anything. 
we've got such a good entrepreneurial spirit within the whole region and just the municipalities want to make it go. This initiative is not just marketing domestically, but it's also marketing internationally and even globally. Well, internationally is globally, but it's marketing to a global audience to invest in this area. In our previous conversation uh, on the cross-border interviews, you talked about how you were in Seoul, Korea or in South Korea and People knew about the coal that was of uh, Grand Cash. Do you hope that this will put Greenview, the county, the city, on that global sort of map for people to look at? I think it will, because when we we took a lot of time and effort to go into this branding and what we can do, because like I said, we've been working together for two, three years now, our ActDev all over the place together when you see the city, county, or Greenview at places, generally there's a few of us there. We're making sure everyone knows. So now this is our way of making sure we want to work together. And if you can brand Northwest Alberta, that brings a better picture. When you talk to someone and say Greenview, they don't say where it is. Grand Prairie, Honda, they have an idea. But when you say Northwest Alberta, it brings it into a little bit better scope for when we go bigger into the global international stuff. I mean, I'd love to have everyone know where Greenview is in the world, but we're small. When you think globally, as big as we are, we're small. So if you can say Northwest Alberta, that brings it into where people actually know in Canada and go. Do you get a sense that the residents of Greenview are behind this initiative? They want to see more investment in the community? I think they do. It's Everyone's always wanted this area to grow. I mean, with growth comes problems, but it also comes a lot of prosperity. And we've seen that over the area with small things come in. We've seen our oil field just explode over the last seven, eight, ten years, correct? So when you can bring in the major players and... It will. People like to see it. I mean, granted, everyone wants it, but not in their backyard. But we've, we're developing areas and all the region, all our municipalities within the region have their different areas where they can go. We're not just putting it in the middle of towns, in the middle of cities. We're putting it where it makes sense. There, there might be concern from the business community that you might be attracting competition to them. Um, have you had conversations with any business leaders within Greenview or even in the region, the Northwest region, to say this is not just a benefit to our municipality, but it's also a benefit to your businesses as well? So when we go through and we've had these conversations, we've had the chambers and all your different ones, business leaders do come out and talk and they all understand because yeah, competition brings more people in. But when you bring in a big industry that's bringing in 100, 150 people, that brings in families, that brings in more jobs, that brings in more people buying products. So yeah, competition, that's why I say competition is healthy because the more you bring in, the more it grows, the more it multiplies. And when you bring in the jobs that we're looking for, the higher end ones in your egg processing, your petrochemical, it brings in a lot more dollars to it and it just brings in more people. And then finally, just to look, because we always like to look forward on this show, looking ahead, what are your long-term hopes for this initiative that will be beneficial? Because we always put metrics into place whenever we look at business opportunities or business ventures or even initiatives. Looking at a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, what are the metrics that you are putting in place as the REAP to say, if this is going to be successful, A, B, and C have to be done within these timeframes? Or are you just, because it's still early days, still sort of molding that clay a little bit? It's still early. I mean, you have to you have to have some metrics to a certain degree to know. My biggest thing is I want this, I want Invest Northwest to be talked about in a year. I want us to be a major player. I want to get us, I want these invites coming to the trade missions. I want, that's how we're going to know what's working is when people are coming to us. I mean, we can push all we want, but if in two years we're still pushing it, it's a hard sell to say it works. And I really don't think so. I think this is going to be something that we're going to have notice in 
a year. We'll be, we'll I'll do another interview in a year and I'll tell you how good it's gone for us. I just have that much faith. This region is pushing forward and invest Northwest is going to be a major driver. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of municipal affairs. Now, if you enjoyed today's interview, no, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of municipal affairs. We truly hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. And just a reminder that all the links that were discussed in today's episode will be in the show notes below. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support and you subscribing to our channels continues to help us bring more conversations and more stories like you heard today to you. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Until then.